Stevia is a natural and low calorie sweetener that's been growing in popularity a lot over the past few years within the low carbon keto community, but also it's been growing in popularity in the food and drink industry and it's generally considered safe. However, a study out of the University of Najiv has shown how stevia could possibly lead to bacterial imbalances within your gut. So that's what we're going to look at today and we're going to take a look at the key points of this and see what they found. Currently, governments are creating regulations to reduce our sugar intake, which is honestly very surprising to me. But this is making companies increase the ratio of artificial sweeteners in their products. However, a lot of people experience a lot of bad side effects from artificial sweeteners. So companies have started to turn to stevia to meet their sweetening needs. Now in this study, the use of stevia resulted in an inhibitory effect on bacterial communication. They found that stevia may disrupt communications between different bacteria within the gut but the good thing is that it didn't kill off any of the bacteria. Even though many people have reported not having any changes in their health from consuming stevia, others have reported having a lot of different unwanted side effects like stomach pain, gas, constipation, and some other things. So what they did in this study was they took three week old rats and put them into four different groups. The first group was gonna be the control group and they just had water. The second group had stevia added to their water. The third group had a prebiotic added to their water. And the fourth group had stevia and the prebiotic added to their water. But we're going to specifically be looking at the highlights from group two and four. We're just going to be looking at group two and four because those are both of the groups that had the stevia in them and they had the most interesting effects. But in group two, stevia reduced the population of a widely recognized and well-established health promoting microbiota, which I will have up here because I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But it's known for its role in short-chain fatty acid production. These short-chain fatty acids have been shown to give protection from childhood obesity, and they've been used as treatment in a supplementation form for many various different diseases. Also in group two, they showed where stevia reduced gene expression in the reward pathways. And what that means is that this in turn decreased dopamine production and transport and dopamine is the feel-good hormone but at the same time they saw no changes in body composition the good thing is that not all of the bacterial changes observed from just stevia consumption were negative they also observed that stevia alone increased the abundance of a bacteria which i'll have right here which has been shown to increase the absorptive capacity of the gut. So jumping over to group four, and that's the group that had stevia and the prebiotic added to their water. But what they found was that it significantly increased the relative abundance of this bacteria compared to all other groups. Now what this bacteria did was it showed an increase in lipid oxidation markers, which is fat burning, and it showed reduced markers of lipogenesis, which is fat storage. So having an increased abundance of this bacteria in the group that had the stevia and the prebiotic simultaneously may account for the greater reduction in fat mass and improved gut permeability that was shown to change in these animals. So knowing that information, this is where you kind of got to make the decision for yourself. Now, I personally don't consume a whole lot of stevia, even though I did at one point in time, but I personally don't recall having any major gut issues. Like many other people reported, that they didn't either, but at the same time, some people did. So obviously, if you consume a lot of stevia and you're having some gut issues, it may make sense to cut back. You don't have to completely cut it out, obviously, but either just use less than you are now or only use it a few times a week. 
Now, yes, this study was done on animals. It was done on rats, not humans. But the thing is, to my understanding, a lot of the stuff that they find in these rat studies and mice studies usually translate in some degree at least into us humans. So if that is true, the biggest problem that I saw here, even if it's a little bit that it translates into, is the group that was consuming just the stevia, they had that reduction of dopamine production and transport. And as I said, dopamine is the feel-good hormone. That's what makes us feel good, makes us happy, and it's also stimulated by a lot of other things. Having a reduction of that is not going to be a good thing, and it can have serious bad effects on your health in the long term. But at the same time, it increased that bacteria that was shown to help increase the uh, absorptive capacity of your gut. So that's kind of a little bit of a trade-off. It's hard to really make a, a decision between. Obviously, there needs to be a lot more studies and research done on this and specifically on humans so that we can get some good concrete evidence of what this study on the rats showed. But I hope y'all got some good information out of this and leave a comment below if you'd like to have a discussion about this further. But guys, keep it keto, keep it healthy, and I'll talk to you next week.